Here it comes. Everybody and welcome back to LMM and if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment how about giving this video a like and maybe subscribing to the channel to help us grow. Today we're going to be asking that age-old question why isn't train spotting cool? As most of you probably know by now I've loved trains for as long as I can remember and for as long as I can remember, people have mocked me for my love of the railways. My school was on the Ipswich to Felixstowe main line, and every break and lunchtime, all I'd want to do is go out and watch the trains go past. And despite this not causing any issues for anybody else, it was different. I didn't want to run around and play football. I just wanted to see which 153 was out today, and if I was lucky, catch the freight before we had to come in after lunch. This, of course, was enough to be outcast and bullied. And even today, when I talk to people outside of the channel, remnants of that attitude remain. When my love of the railways is brought up, then normally that stereotypical comment of, do you have an anorak? Something like that, you know the ones. Something that very rapidly goes away when I go, well, no, I'm not a train spotter. I'm a steam locomotive driver. The difference in terms appears to make all of the difference. Most people take the act of driving an iron dinosaur to be something actually pretty cool. Being involved in the railway, volunteering and driving locomotives is something that most people who grew up watching a certain blue tank engine have at least pondered about doing. It is something that is quite cool. Train spotting, on the other hand, remains very much uncool. And that's strange, because if we look back at the golden age of railways, or even the 50s and the 60s, one of the first images that comes to our head is that of the schoolboy gathered on bridges to watch trains go past. Vast numbers of train spotting publications existed. In fact, I've got several in my own personal library with names and numbers for you to cross off as you spotted them. This was a totally acceptable way to act, and kids in those days had a bit more freedom to head off and go and find places to spot trains. The whole concept of the railway was glamorised. It was a totally desirable and respectable job to want to grow up and be a locomotive driver. Today, it's perfectly acceptable to know the name, the number of your favourite football player, to know how many goals they've scored this season and where they're best placed. But to know the power output of a locomotive, to know what's a regular for a route, or even to know what it actually is, well, in that case, go get your anorak, son, and join the shun train spotters. So, what did happen to the mighty train spotting, and why do I still see on social media people being shamed for being a train spotter? Of all the people in society who cause problems, a group of people huddled together on a platform, or on a bridge, or by the line side, are hardly the biggest of problems. Part of the problem is that the railway fraternity is quite a divided community. Just because you like trains doesn't necessarily make you a train spotter. Train spotting itself is the art of going somewhere to watch trains go past, perhaps take some numbers of the locomotives and units, and generally, broadly speaking, it involves the mainline and modern traction. If you prefer going to a heritage railway to see the old stuff, you're more likely calling yourself a railway enthusiast. Yes, I'm aware that I'm now splitting hairs, but it is quite an important distinction. Somebody who enjoys train spotting might not necessarily enjoy going to a steam railway gala, and somebody who enjoys traveling behind steam engines might not be interested in coming to Derby Road to sit and wait for a 755 to roll through. And just because you like watching trains doesn't necessarily mean that you'd like to be actively involved with the railways. You're not necessarily pursuing a career on the railway or looking at volunteering at a heritage railway. For instance, people like me. If I see a modern train, I'll watch it go by, but I wouldn't actually go out of my way to go and see one. I wouldn't consider myself a train spotter. And why is that? Well, I see myself as a heritage enthusiast. As you've probably seen from the stuff on the channel, I like old machines. 
I love steam engines because they're impossible survivors. Things that were thrown away and scrapped. Things that some bonkers people decided shouldn't be forgot. Modern traction just doesn't do it for me. And I think that's part of the problem. The modern railway just isn't that exciting. Going and seeing a 755 whir into a platform doesn't capture the same levels of excitement as seeing a Brit. Back in the day, there were a huge variety of locomotives hauling a huge variety of different trains. Each region had their own classes with different sized and shaped locomotives for different routes and purposes. There were more routes, more traffic, more trains, more engines. You could stand by the line side and not see the same type of locomotive come past twice. For me, locally, even over the last 10 years, it's got notably more boring. We used to have class 86s and 90s on push-pulls, 153s, 156s, 170 turbo stars, and the odd 70, 37, 47, 57, even 68s. Today, it's 755s and 66s. And with the best will in the world, even with my aversion to this modern world, that is boring. There's not even any livery variation, grey lumps of plastic and the majority green class 66s. A steam engine or an old school diesel, no matter how you felt about travelling behind them or just seeing them, there was a certain level of drama. A performance. It shouted at you in a voice of fire or the roar of exhaust. Look at me. Acknowledge me. I am speed. I am power. I am cool. And I think that's reflected in how train spotting is perceived. It's just not that interesting, at least not to the general public. In that regard, it's almost entirely overlooked. And there lies the problem. The way we perceive the railway has changed. We've moved away from it as a whole. Today, the road and the car reign. Our first instinct when we want to go somewhere is to drive. The railway has somewhat lessened in its importance to all of us. Every day we see goods being transported by lorries on the road and it's easy to assume that that load went from A to B on that very truck. We drive because it suits us. We get to decide when, where and which way we go. We drive to do the things that we love. We drive to see our friends, to go away for a weekend, to go out for a meal. We even drive to go to the railway and see trains. The railway used to mean freedom, excitement and travel. Today, it just means work. It's just a cog in the machine. And to celebrate that, that feels alien. Every day, new fences are erected, taller with spiky tops to keep people away from the line side. To stop idiots from playing on the track or dumping rubbish or deciding that the forefoot seems to be a good place to just go for a walk. We are separated from our railways by a very literal divide. And every day, that gets bigger and we fall more and more out of love with our railways. The railways have changed. The way we see the railways have changed and the way that we interact and use the railways have changed. There's no denying that the railways still remain a vital part of the UK's infrastructure with packed commuting trains heading into the busy centres and more freight travelling across our network. We just don't love it and we don't feel like it should be celebrated. And perhaps that's part of why train spotting is uncool. Trains of today are not cool. The railways are not cool. The railways have been in decline for decades. There's been negative press from beaching through the corporate area to privatization and it continues today. We have expensive tickets and poor service. The romance is dead. Those glory days of kids running off to sea trains are very much in the past and stand very little chance of ever being repeated. Great and powerful engines with roaring fires forged from steel and iron, radiating presence are gone. Instead, we have units made from plastic, soulless and quiet. Crucially, it boils down to how we see the railway. In the golden age, the railways meant business. Goods was travelled by rail. Railways meant travel. It meant you could get about. Today, well, railways mean the grim and packed commute to work. The romance isn't so much dead. At this point, it's six foot under.
And that, more than anything, is the problem. Why would anybody actually want to watch trains? I mean, what's the point? Well, I would ask the same for something like fishing, which actually now I thought about it, there's quite a few parallels with it. It's just a nice thing to do, to sit back and watch the world go by, to relax and unwind. And occasionally you might get a bite or see a train go past. And there's an awful lot of sitting around doing absolutely nothing. For train spotting, there's the challenge of trying to see all of a particular class or knowing what locomotives or units will be running a particular route. It's something that you can be passionate about without having a fight with your neighbour because he supports a rival TOC. It's a low stress, low cost hobby. Something that you can enjoy with your friends and it actually has a surprising social aspect. Hanging out, talking about nothing in particular and then all trying to get a photo and take the number as a train comes past. There are indeed worse ways to spend a day and for those who love their modern traction, it makes them happy being by the line side watching trains go by. And just because the rest of us have fallen out of love with the railways, it doesn't mean that should devalue the things that make other people happy, which is just watching trains go by. So maybe it's us, even us fellow enthusiasts. Maybe we need to change how we feel about the railway. And if we manage to do that, maybe that will change the way that we see the humble train spotter. Try.